I have a new hero this week, and it seems lately that our heroes are more often women than men. Added to the list of courageous journalists like Amy Goodman of Democracy Now! and writer Naomi Wolf is a congresswoman from Ohio, Marcy Kaptur. She is the Paul Revere of this revolution to cast off the corrupt banking cartels. Millions of Americans have lost their homes or face foreclosure in the nation's mortgage crisis. One congresswoman has some advice for them. Don't leave. Drew Griffith of our Special Investigations Unit has that story. The notices came to her home in April. Andrea Geis's bank foreclosed on her. Behind in payments, out of work, a husband sick, she had nowhere to go. So she decided to follow the advice of her congresswoman and go nowhere. Geis is part of a new movement in the housing crisis, squatters. For lack of a better term, you're kind of squatting in this house, aren't you? Basically, yes. Yep. Last resort? Last resort, yes. More than 4,000 properties were foreclosed on in Toledo's Lucas County last year. This year, it could be worse. There's a county clerk whose full-time job is typing up and sending out foreclosure notices. Tomorrow morning, those will be mailed out. Elected officials are saying Toledo is not in a recession. It is a depression. It is this bleak backdrop that inspired Toledo Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur to take the floor of the House earlier this month to tell her constituents to stay put. So I say to the American people, you'll be squatters in your own homes. Don't you leave. Kaptur says she has had it with government bailouts for Wall Street banks, but nothing for homeowners. She is advocating for a legal revolution, a demand that not one of her constituents leaves their home without an attorney and a fight. Even if they've been foreclosed on, don't leave. If they've had no legal representation of a high quality, I tell them stay in their homes. Captor is behind a strategy called Produce the Note. Mortgages have been so divvied up on Wall Street that banks are having a hard time finding that original paperwork, adding a delay to foreclosures. She is also pushing banks to rework loans, especially those banks getting bailouts and holding mortgages of folks getting tossed out. They're vultures. They prey on our property assets. And I guess the reason I'm so adamant on this is because I know property law and its power to um, protect the individual homeowner. And I believe that 99.9% .9 of our people have not, have, have not had good legal representation in this. Without a lawyer, Andrea Geis bought a $147,000 home with nearly $40,000 down. I should have had an attorney. I really should have had the attorney. I did not know. She admits she didn't read the paperwork, didn't learn, until it was too late. She had a subprime loan. Her payments of $883 a month jumped in a year to more than $1,500. When it did, she stopped paying. So they foreclosed on you? They have foreclosed on me, yeah. The law firm representing the bank in Geis's foreclosure declined comment to CNN. Another one of the banks, Geis believes holds her note, Wells Fargo, said it wouldn't comment on individual cases but tries to work with homeowners. Backed by her congresswoman, Geis simply is not budging. Drew Griffin, Toledo, Ohio. As more and more people catch on to the fact that the mortgages on their properties are defective, fraudulent, or hopelessly divided up among dozens of financial institutions, there will be a rebellion. The mortgages were deceptive and therefore null and void under state and federal law. The banks made billions leveraging these mortgages, and of course we all know that First American Title and other similar companies offering title and escrow and assessment services have been making out like bandits on the churning of properties. The oligarchs know full well that it will be impossible for private banks using local sheriffs to kick millions of people out of their homes as the economy and unemployment situation worsens. The sheriff's departments will simply refuse to kick women and children out of their homes for the benefit of a bunch of offshore bankers and crooks like Bernie Madoff. 
So what would the banksters do in the face of a mass rebellion of squatters, as suggested by Marcy Captor? These nefarious characters would simply get the federal government to take over the bad mortgages. And that's basically what they've done in these bailouts. Now that these mortgages are federalized, the squatters would not be facing hated bankers and local sheriffs, but potentially they'd be facing federal tanks, bulldozers, and military units. In other words, the American people could be gazed out of their homes with massive military force. Because now the government is the mortgage holder. As I said a few weeks ago, when you watch helpless peasant populations being rolled over by massive military force, even if these people look different and speak differently, and even if you have no sympathy for them as human beings, just remember that military force utilized to steal their homes and their property. Those same tactics can now be used on Americans. This earth of yours will be reduced to a burned-out cinder.